Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Microsoft Dynamics Tips and Tricks webinar brought to you by the Marks Group. Um, today, we're going to talk about the following three tips. First, we will talk about adding this jump bar back. Um, if you'll notice, if I go to contacts, the jump bar, which is those letters A through Z that make navigation really quick and easy, um, the, that is missing and has been since a very recent service update from about a week ago. Um, so if you're trying to add those back, you've come to the right place, we will walk through that. I will also talk about opening a Office document that has opened in a um, Office program in a browser, um, how to open that in the desktop app, because that took me quite a few minutes to find um, on my own the other day, because I never, I never work in the browser versions of the apps, I prefer to work in desktop. Um, so. We will talk about that, and we will also talk about uh, just a couple notes on flows and sharing them, how to share them, why you want to share them, um, and yeah. So let's get started with the jump bar. So first, we're going to click on this gear icon in the upper right corner, and then we'll click on advanced settings. That's going to open up a new tab for you. Um, it'll take you to the settings area in the back end. There are there is a new um, area for these customization settings. Um, the it's like admin.powerplatform.com. Um, we are not going to go back there because they have not transferred 100% of the features over there yet. This is the only place where you can fix the jump bar still. So um, once you're in the settings area, click on the the um, arrow next to settings, then click customizations. That'll take you to this page, then click Customize the System. Um, I did just do this for our account on a, on a different recording, but had to scrap it, so we are starting over. Um, once you're in here, expand the Entities tab right here. And then in our case, we just did it for accounts, but now we're going to go to Contacts and do the same thing. So I'm going to find Contacts. I'm just going to select the name of the entity here, and it will load. Um, here. Then we're going to click the controls tab right here. You'll see by default it's called read-only grid. This is what they removed the jump bar from. Um, there are no properties to edit so you can't edit back that way. So we do not want Power Apps Grid Control. Um, that's not going to give us what we need. So scroll down quite a ways and find Power Apps Read-Only Grid. This is what you want. This is how we get the jump bar back. Once you add it here, it'll be selected already. Make sure you immediately um, change the default view. I, I changed it for, for all three um, device types um, to the Power, App, Power Apps read-only grid, or the jump bar still won't, you just won't see it um, because the other control will be selected still. So we'll select that make a default for all device types. Then with it selected still, you'll see the jump bar property down below. So select that, or really just select the um, edit icon to the right. Change it from disable to enable. Then click OK. Immediately save and then publish. Um, I tried to do this for like 10 entities all in one go and I would just save but not publish in between. I tried to just publish one time at the end and it didn't work that well. I would say it caught about 70% of the entities. For whatever reason, I had to go back for some other ones and, and republish. Um, so to avoid having to go back and check all of them, I have just started to publish in between every entity, um, which is a little bit of a pain, does take a little bit longer, but ultimately is faster than having to go back in and check all of them again. Um, so then now that we have fixed that, we're going to go back to the contacts area in Dynamics, and I'm going to do a refresh with Control R. And sure enough, we've got the jump bar back. And again, this is, I don't, if you don't use this. If you select one of these letters, it's just going to bring up any records that start with that um, letter. So if we go to M, we'll see Maria Campbell, um, etc. So 
um, that is fixed. That's how you fix the jump bar. And we are good to go again. Um, next up, I'm going to talk about flows. So I'm just going to jump over to the Power Automate area. Um, if you need to get to flows, you just click on this grid icon. I'm not sure why this is not coming up for me at the moment. Um, Come on now. Okay, um, if you're trying to get to Power Automate, just click this grid icon, then find Power Automate here, and then click My Flows. Um, this is not an important flow, this is a random test flow, just so I can demonstrate how this works, but if you have any important flows in your organization, please make sure that you share them with someone. If you share them with someone, they will also receive notifications when there's something wrong with the flow, um, if the flow has been turned off automatically, um, and just a quick side note on that. This is not well known, but unless you have a very specific Power Apps license, or I'm sorry, Power Automate license, um, you any flows that do not get used in, in 90 days, or if they are, if the interval between flow runs is greater than 90 days, the flow will be turned off automatically by Microsoft. So. I have a client that has a super, super important flow, but it only runs maybe once every 100 days, something like that. That's just the way the frequency has ended up working out. Um, so it is, it has been turned off in the past. It's been a huge problem. So I had to create another flow to trigger this flow every now and then. I think I, think I have it set up to just do once a month um, just to keep it turned on. So if you, are in that same situation where you have a super important flow, it runs less frequently than every 90 days, um, I would definitely suggest creating some sort of, whether it's a background workflow um, or a, a flow, like a Power Automate flow, um, to prompt that other flow to, to be triggered just so that it doesn't get turned off automatically. But that's part of why I also suggest sharing flows um, just so more than one person does get notified when those issues come up. So to share a flow with someone to add additional owners, click share here and then just type in the name. Any connections that are in use will also be used by the people that are being that you're sharing the flow with. Um, that doesn't mean they get access to any of your information or anything like that. They're just leveraging the, the connection that's already existing here. Um, which means that the flow will also work for them and they'll be able to make changes to it and things like that. Um, I do have this flow turned off right now because it's, it, I do not want to, this one this is just for testing purposes. Um, but yeah, uh, share your important flows with people. Make sure you have some sort of contingency plan for if you think they'll run less than every 90 days because unless you have a very specific license type, they will be turned off automatically, at least as of 2022. Um, so those are my, I'll get off my flow soapbox now. Um, and we'll move on to this test document that I have. It's just a random Excel document. Um, but imagine this, you, someone shares a, a file with you, you, oh, you click the link in the email where you get notified that it's been shared with you. It opens up, the app in their browser. Um, maybe that doesn't bother you. Just for whatever reason, I personally can't stand working with Microsoft apps in the browser. I, I really prefer working in the desktop app. So if you're trying to figure that out, all you have to do is click this button right here. Um, this was not obvious to me. It took me a really long time to find. Um, so yeah, if you're trying to open a and some sort of file, that has opened in your browser. Click this button, then click open in desktop app. You'll get a little confirmation in your browser and it will open up Excel for you. Um, in this case, I, I need to log in, but that is how that works. So it'll just open up right there. Um, you can resume editing here if you prefer, or you can just close this out um, when you're finished working with the file. And that's it.
So just to summarize, we covered three tips today. First was adding that jump bar, the A through Z navigation um, back into Dynamics for a given entity. Um, kind of time consuming, but definitely worth it if your users use it. Second tip was to just talking about sharing flows, how to share flows, why you wanna share flows, and a note on flows automatically turning off. Um, and then third, we talked about opening up a Office, or I should say Microsoft 365 program file um, in the browser. If you wanna open that up in your desktop, um, just click this editing button or viewing or uh, read only whatever it's called um, and then click the open in desktop app um, selection below there. Thank you so much for joining. I hope this was helpful and I will see you guys next month for some more tips. Apologies for any babies you hear in the background. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you guys next time.